Yo, yo, yo. Welcome to the NS9 Post Game Show. I'm Jim Rosati. With me is Tyler. Pirates win 7-1. to one. How you doing, Tyler? Oh, boy. The excitement slightly fizzled a little bit. But, man, that offense exploded again. And there are some things that we can get to that we might not until Thursday when you're not here because you're a part-timer. Right. That's that's what I do. Um, Well, we've got, uh, yeah, DiNardo hopefully will be uh, be back by Thursday. (laughs) We'll we'll see. Um, He's on the the IL right now. But, uh, yeah, I mean, what a game. And it was kind of similar to yesterday's game in that, um, you know, the the offense – jumped on on the Cubs early I mean this game was this game felt like it was over in the third inning um just just like yesterday's and and like when you can do something like that when you can jump on a team uh and just like put up zeros you know when you're pitching it just makes the game so much more fun and enjoyable and and this is now two straight days we've seen it happen like you mentioned the the offense again outstanding um it all started first bat of the game. Key Brian Hayes tripled. Uh, Brian Reynolds sack fly to score him. Swinski two walks tonight. Vogelbach two walks tonight and two hits. O'Neill Cruz with another RBI single. Uh, Bly Madris first major league home run in his second game. Uh, Michael Perez home run. So like every, everybody was joining in on the fun today. Uh, just just a great game overall. Rowan Z Contreras picks up the win. He goes to two and one. We'll get to Contreras. Uh, he didn't look that sharp, but he he got the job done. And then a great job by the bullpen to, to shut things down. But man, where do you want to start today? Do we want I mean, do we gotta start with Cruz again? Yeah, I I, I guess we have to because that's <laughs> why people are here. Yeah. Nobody nobody I, cares about the rest of the little. Nobody cares about Dan Vogelbach being on base four yeah. times. So, I mean, O'Neill Cruz, um, you know, he, he, I think he popped out in his first at bat, but then yeah. he got a chance with, with runners on base in the third inning, uh, hit a ball like 110 miles an hour through the shift. Um, he became the first pirate since like some guy named Cookie in 1934 <laughs> to have an RBI in each of his first four games. Like this is where we're at right now where – O'Neill Cruz is doing things that hasn't haven't been done in like 90 years. So O'Neill Cruz joins some guy named Cookie. Um, <laughs> what, what's his name? Actually, I, I got here. Cookie Lavagetto in 1934. First first pirate to get an RBI in his first four games uh, since then. So that's what 90, 88 years. 88 years. It's a lot of math for me right now. Yeah. Let me tell you about my night here. I sat at the bar, and before the game, I grabbed the remote, turned the Pirates game on. And everybody around me got to watch my alien that was playing for the Pirates. Because all I just kept saying was, yeah. look at that, he's an alien. We'll just watch him, watch him, watch him. And then I kept explaining, this guy hits a ball 118 miles an hour, throws it 96, and he runs like 23 miles an hour. And they're like, is that good? Like, yeah, it's incredible. Also, it he's 6'7 was... and plays shortstop. And then people just looked at me funny. Like, yeah. they know what I'm talking about. Right, right. But that they sounds did. like fun. Yeah, you're just trying to spread the good news. The good exactly. news of Oni Cruz. Right. Well, so, so he gets Before that RBI. I have sick. to hear about, yeah. uh, he'll probably be traded. Right. Whatever. We'll get to that six years from now. <laughs> but Exactly. Um, Oni Cruz, though, he gets that RBI single, and then he immediately... Uh, steal second base 
It's his first major league steal, right? I mean, just, a run. I mean, very easy steal. It does. It creates a run that can throw goes away. Uh, Vogelbach, I believe, was the guy on third base. And he, I mean, Vogelbach was able to walk in. So, yeah, just an excellent – another another just example of how he can be a complete game changer. Um, he was responsible for for a couple runs today uh, that – that like he he created those, um, but I do want to talk about. I mean, anything more with Cruz? I mean, we I know we we talked a lot about him last night. And it's just it's so fun. To, it's so fun to watch him. It's it's exciting that he's here, but there is a lot of other things I think to talk about today. Like like there Cruz is. Cruz was fun. He was great again today, um, but, but there's some other stuff. I think you you hit the the nail on the head there with being a game changer. Because he literally does change. They can't pitch to him when the bases are loaded and nobody's out. When he's on base, you have to pay attention to him. When he's at shortstop, mm-hmm. maybe it's not the smoothest thing you've ever seen, but he can field any ball that's hit within, like, the earth radius. Will he throw it there? I don't know. But the guy is a gazelle. I think that's the thing too. Like there were a few ground balls hit to him today where you would look at it and say, eh, that wasn't really the smoothest thing I've ever seen. But then again, like none of us have ever seen a six foot seven guy feel ground balls before. Like it just looks weird. So like, I don't know if it's ever going to really look all that smooth just because it's, it'll be something that we've never seen like ever in the history of the sport. Uh, So you've never seen it. Like you literally have not. Yeah, <laughs> like it, it's when you see him play shortstop, it's it, he's the only person who's done it ever, um, like the way he has. Uh, so I think that's I don't I don't even know really if you could say it's not smooth. I mean, he got the job done every single time. Every time he was, the ball was hit to him in his general vicinity, he fielded the ground ball. He threw it to first. He got the out. Right. I mean, at the end of the day, that's all that matters. Um, and like I said, I think it's going to just look weird for a while. Because we're just, you you don't see people who look like that, you know, be athletic and feel grounders in Major League Baseball. No, like, there's a reason he's the first to do it. And he's honestly probably going to be the last for a very long time to do it. Because most teams would. Yeah. Most, not even most. There is nobody built like that human being. No. People are not created like that. People and that's don't why do you the see things he can do. Right. And that's why you see all of these. I mean, the MLB account, first off, like an hour before the game, tweeted out again, like, we can't get over this throw by O'Neill Cruz yesterday. Like, they are still tweeting about it. They tweeted again about his hit today. Like, people are just enamored with this guy because he is doing things no one's ever seen. But the, the best comp was. This- I think Daryl Strawberry playing shortstop. Yeah, that's exactly right. I mean, Daryl Strawberry, a complete freak athlete, um, just so incredibly naturally gifted. But again, what wasn't a shortstop. So like, you put Daryl Strawberry at shortstop, and this is what you got. Yeah, I mean, if Pirates fans don't remember Daryl Strawberry, it's like Gregory Polanco playing shortstop, but more athletic. Yeah, He's it's 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 so fun to watch. Um, I I am so looking forward to just seeing him day yeah. in and day out. He makes ground and, balls exciting. Like when he hits a ground. I found this on the web. Yeah, it's stupid okay. watch. Thank yeah, you. I don't know when I watched him. <laughs> but like when he hits a grounder, I want to look at my phone and see how hard it was because I know it was a hard grounder. Yeah, no, his last at bat of the game, I think, was is what it was. He uh, he grounded out, and I was like, I "Wonder how hard that was it." And it was like ninety miles an hour, but yeah, he makes you he makes you look at that. Um, his his RBI single was one hundred and twelve. Uh, yeah, <laughs> it was the third <laughs> hardest hit baseball by a pirate this year. Yeah, so he had the hardest the one. one. <laughs> yeah, he had the hardest one last night. Key Brian Hayes has the second hardest, and then that one today was the third hardest. So he's been up for two days. He owns two of the three hardest hit baseballs by a pirate this year. Yeah, the the ball's just different off that bat. Yep, 
it's like I said, I, I just I don't know how you can look at these last two games and just not be excited. Yeah. Like if you if you're not excited about what you're seeing, then you're just a grumpy person and you don't want to have fun. Like you've decided that you don't want to have fun and you're that's just who you're gonna be. I think you you summed it up great last night. You're either a dork, right, or a loser, right? So you're one of the two. If you don't if you don't like what you're seeing, you're a dork or a loser. <laughs> I know it's extreme, but Steeler tweeted earlier. He might be the like just natural ability. He might be the most talented player I've ever seen. And like, what's weird about it? Like, because we've only seen him two games. And we're, I'm but, just talking. We're just talking. No, talent. we're talking about talent. You're right, and you're right. And but you look at the things that he's doing, and you've never seen anyone do it before. That's what makes you. That's what makes a, a tweet like that not seem completely outrageous yeah. because you you see it and you're like, well, that's that's completely absurd. But then you go and you're like, well, he's doing things I've literally never seen before. There are not human beings that are six seven that can play the middle infield and throw 96 miles an hour across the diamond while hitting a ball 118 miles an hour and run faster than Tyreek Hill. Like that doesn't exist. I I think I think someone was like, if you if you took his sprint speed from from third base to home and like prorated it over like if it was like a 40 yard dash, he would have ran like a three nine. Yeah, it's incredible, like how athletic yeah. this guy is. Yeah, it's... will it all like combine into a terrific baseball player? We all hope. Yep. But every single tool is there. Yep, and it's like I said, that's what makes them exciting. Who knows what? It, what? Who knows how it's all going to come together in the long run? But he's exciting to watch. Yeah. Oh, completely. Um. All right, so twelve minutes talking about O'Neill Cruz. We wanted to keep this to like Welcome twenty. Welcome to the today. rest of the year. We wanted to keep this to like twenty today. How about Bly Madrid? Second game, so like he kind of like gets called up. He's like overshadowed by O'Neill Cruz because obviously he's O'Neill Cruz. You're going to be overshadowed by him. But Bly with a big game yesterday with three hits in his major league debut, and then today um, first home run. So I mean, like, that's 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 pretty cool. Great story. Um, again, we talked a little bit about him last night. Just can't help but root for the guy. I don't know if he's going to end up being good. He, he could just, you know, be a late bloomer. He's hit at every level in the minors, but he's never really been a heralded prospect. But you can tell, like, he definitely doesn't look overmatched by any means. I mean, we're two games in, and he seems like he belongs, right? And that was kind of like when we were just giving him the eye test here and kind of same said the same thing about Swinsky when he was first called up, you know, he's, he's not overmatched. He's, he looks like he belongs. And I'm seeing that from, from Bly Madris right now, again, it's only two games. It's against bad Cubs pitching. So, I mean, we do have to kind of take that into account, but I mean, awesome start to his career. Yeah. It's been two games, like you said, but um. He's a guy that I think you really want to see a lot more of, especially when we're talking about a Ben Gamble, Kevin Newman, Mm -hmm. Yoshi, probably another one that I forget already. Kevin Newman. (laughs) Josh Van Meter. Van Meter, yeah. (laughs) But when you talk about all these guys coming back, we don't want to see them anymore. Like I want to see more of this youth movement, and we know that Bly is not a young guy, really. He's 26. Mm -hmm. But I think me and you and me and Denardo talked about it. There was an adjustment made. Is he going to be a good major leaguer? I don't – nobody knows. But it's been done before where guys have clicked in their mid-20s in the Mm -hmm. AAA. And you mentioned that he had hit really well through the minors, but not to the level that he hit this year. This Mm -hmm. year was different with him. So I'm definitely more interested in seeing more. I don't know if I'm fully, but I'm not, I'm definitely not fully buying in, but no. I'm, I'm fully willing to watch more. Yeah. Dave just comments, you know, he thinks Madrid and Mitchell are, you know, fourth and fifth outfielders long-term. And, and I think those are like reasonable expectations. 
Yeah. You know, if, if we're if we're thinking about guys who can come up here, you know, these outfielders that we're kind of churning through right now, and by that I mean Mitchell and uh, Smith and Jigba and Madris and Swaggerty, right? Like you just you you need a few of them to just pan out to be major leaguers, right? Like you can go and find like a corner outfielder out there you know, on the open market, yeah. if, if it, if it comes down to it, right. You know, if, if we're looking at this team and thinking like, what is this thing going to look like in a couple of years and, and you can, you know, you can slot in Brian Reynolds. I don't think we, you can necessarily slot in Jack Sawinski, you know, to, to a roster spot, but you know, he's definitely like, you have to like what you see out of Jack Sawinski so far. Um, and, and again, like you just, you've got these outfielders who are all kind of major league ready and now's the time to find out, hey, are they are they someone that, that can stick around? Absolutely. I mean, like you said, there it's the same kind of thing in the middle infield right now. Yep. Yep. But maybe not to the same extreme because we know we hope we know what O'Neill Cruz is. We hope Aguero Gonzalez who went on the IL. But you hope you have some upper level guys there. Mm-hmm. The outfield's a lot of we'll wait and see types, but yeah. there's also a lot of talent there, which is also the same reason I don't really want to see a Ben Gamble get a lot of at-bats. I, there's a lot of guys you need to sort through the shuffle and see who's going to figure it out. Because like you said, there's going to be spots available and you really hope at least one of these guys can take a spot next to Brian Reynolds so that, maybe a free agent guy can step in. Yeah. And, and I mean, you mentioned Ben Gamble and that's going to be, it's going to be really interesting here in the next like week or two, what this team does, because you now have this whole youth movement that just has been, has been called up the, the last week or two. Right. Uh, and, and you now, and you have Van Meter, you've got Newman, you've got Susugo, you've got Gamble all starting rehab assignments in, in Indianapolis. So they're all going to be, you know, everybody's rehab is a little bit different. Everybody, you know, some people might be ready in a week, some people will be ready in two weeks, whatever it may be. But they're going to have decisions to make with all four of those guys and with the with the other people on the roster. I think there are some sp- spots for them, right? Like Yu Chang isn't going to be on this roster much longer. Right? God, I hope not. Um, like Diego Castillo, I know he had a big game on, when was that, Saturday, Friday? Feels like, like a month ago. But probably, like, he's just not getting a lot of playing time right now. Mm-hmm. So, you know, like, do Castillo and Shane go um, for, I don't know, Gamble and Newman, right? There's Cal Mitchell's in that mix as well, I think. Yeah, like Mitchell's in there. Right down. I know for you know myself personally, I don't want to see Josh Van Meter anymore. I don't no. want to see Yoshi Susugo anymore. Those two guys don't want to see him anymore. <laughs> like no. we, I, there's just no point, no point in me watching either of those two guys anymore. Um, I think Kevin Newman still could serve a purpose. Like he he is really good defensively. Like I like you got to give him that. Like he's he's pretty good defensively, and he's not a good hitter. <laughs> Right. Like, let's let's get that out of the way. But like, he's at least like a major league player, I think, like barely. Right. Um, where he could at least we missed Hoy Park in that one. on a roster. We did. We did, miss, we did miss Hoy Park, too. Although he is hitting the ball hard lately. Uh, yes. Yes. No. Yeah. Park didn't have a hit today, but he had a, he had a decent game yesterday and he's been he's been better this time around. When they've called him up, yeah, and he's playing um, okay defense. Yeah, um, but no, that that'll be something. I guess we'll talk about that later on. But yeah, a lot of decisions to be made here soon. Um, but but really, just to touch on the rest of the lineup again: Vogelbach, good game, two walks, a hit, two hits with a double, Hayes triple, Reynolds, uh, Reynolds RBI sacrifice fly with another hit, and just just an overall good game by the offense. Michael Perez home run. Um, let's talk pitching. Rowan Z. Was Rowan Z day today? Jim, before okay. we get to that. All right. We're, I, we're, I just, we're, I just we're, want we're, to touch on I know. I just want right. to touch on this. Yeah. Anthony says they can platoon Castillo and Cruz. I do not want to see O'Neill Cruz in a single platoon ever. 
Yeah, me either. I, we've seen the Pirates do this with too many lefty prospects. Let the guy learn how to hit a lefty. Yep. I don't want to see them platoon him at all. I agree. So he needs to be your everyday. He, yeah. He's your everyday player, regardless whoever's on the mound. But I, I do think his first off day will come Thursday. They face a lefty afternoon game. I feel like they're gonna sit him that day. So if you're going to give him, yeah, like if you're going to give him a planned off day, like every 10 days or so, and you want to line it up with a lefty, then sure, by all means do that. But like, I don't want that to happen. Right. Like I don't want him to be a righty. Like, yeah, yeah, he needs to be able to hit lefties. Yeah. They have to play him against lefties. And this is the year to actually play him against lefties. Not like they do with Polanco where he, was a platoon guy basically for his first three years. Yeah. And Clint Hurdle did not want to, but that was a competitive team. Right now is the time to actually play him against a lefty. And if we get to that point, we get to that point. But he's got to play against them. Yep. No, I agree. Um, all right. Let's, let's shift to uh, Rowan Z. Contreras. So got the start today was quite frankly from what I I mean I mean I, I mean I was I watched every pitch he threw he looked bad today like he did not look good today at all he threw a few just completely terrible 0 2 pitches to some batters that luckily stayed in the ballpark um but you know I think it was uh Christopher Morell hit an 0 2 hanging slider off the wall Jason Hayward hit an 0-2 hanger off the wall. Um, So he got lucky on a few of those 0-2 pitches that were just terrible, terrible pitches. Patrick Wisdom hit a ball to, like, the moon. I think it was 460 feet, like Kip Wells territory out there in center field. Um, But, but no, he he didn't look good today by any means. But, but – he's such a good pitcher and his stuff is so good that even though he looked bad, like I'll, I would say he looked bad today. He still only gave up one run on four hits through five innings. Like he was, he still pitched effectively while looking bad. And that I think is a positive sign that like, he's a good pitcher like that. That's what good pitchers do. Like good pitchers when they look bad are still good. Yeah, my now you you would definitely that. want to see him dominate, right, and like hit his spots. But I'm I'm okay with with you know if he's going through a funk and he doesn't look good, but the results are still there. I would, I think I'd go out on a limb and say he he hasn't looked good in a little like a good bit of time. Mm-hmm. Like last start was bad. This start yeah. I don't think was good at all. This start might have been worse than the last start but he got the results, but there's starting to be a few concerns pop up with Renzi. But like you said, he's still, it's almost reminiscent of Garrett Cole whenever he was like the 2015 Garrett Cole where he wasn't going deep in the games. And he just doesn't look great, but the results are always there. It's like, mm-hmm. I know there's something dominant in there. Yeah. But it's just, not quite there like there's something missing mm-hmm. and i think you have to just kind of remember like he's 22 yeah you know uh he, he's 22 he hasn't really even thrown that many minor league innings you know between the covid year and and the injury last year you know we're talking about a guy who hasn't thrown a lot of base a lot of pitches in professional baseball uh and he's he's doing this at a young age and he's he's getting good results. Again, I I think he looked bad today, but five innings, one run. I'm gonna take that all day. Um, and, and I feel like, you know, if we're talking development, he still has he's, like he's nowhere near his ceiling right now, like nowhere near it. Um, but the fact that he's still getting results. Like even even his previous two starts were where you mentioned he didn't look good, right? And and he didn't. He's still like 
he didn't get like shelled like in either of them, right? Like he kept the team in both of those games. And that's, that's what you want to see out of like your good, good pitchers is when they don't have it, you're still keeping your team in the game. And then when you do have it, like you're, you're out there shoving and dominating. Um, so it's, it's been, it's been three starts, I think where, you know, he hasn't looked completely sharp. Maybe maybe they like do something here soon where they like skip a skip a turn in his rotation or something like that. Give him a little because they are going to have to do something to kind of keep his inning limit pitch you know, his innings down for the year. I don't know if they'll shut him down early or what, but um, he didn't look sharp today, but got the job done, picked up the win. Again, once once the Pirates got a pretty good lead, he, he was kind of just throwing strikes at that point. Yeah. Like, that's all you so really he, want. Yeah. Um, but I, I'm not, I'm not concerned by any means. I was actually encouraged by, by what I saw. And like I said, when, when you look as bad as he did and you still get good results, like I'm, I'm optimistic about, about that. It was also against the Cubs and they suck. So I mean, the, the Cubs. It's funny pitching, because we were talking about yeah, the Cubs. Like, the Cubs the pitching like, is awful. It's awful, but their offense is not like the worst. It's 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 better than the Pirates' offense, right? Um, it's it, it, but it's not like the absolute worst in baseball. Uh, you know, it's better than the Cubs have more runs than the Rays, the Orioles, the Tigers, the White Sox, the Royals, the Mariners, the A's. And the Pirates. So, like, I mean, we're, we're talking about an offense that is below average, but not, like, completely inept and pathetic. Yeah, but in terms of runs, the, the guy's got to learn to throw in on the righty. Everything he throws is out, out, out. And against a lefty, mm-hmm. it's in, in, in. He throws the same side of the plate every single pitch. Yeah, and, and and yeah, if you want to like kind of break down things, I think you're I think you're right there. Like one he needs if once he starts going inside on hitters a bit more, he's he's gonna he's gonna become dominant. And I think that just comes with just being more comfortable with your stuff. I hope so because at some point these guys are they're major league hitters. They're right. gonna know this guy pounds outside over and mm-hmm. over and over and over. And he's getting away with it because his slider is so damn good. And his fastball is yeah. so damn good. But the command really does have to come. Or else we're going to see, you know, the flashes for a long time. And it's going to be five innings and what we see all the time. No, you're right. Um, and I said they're being they're being definitely very careful with him. I mean, I, I think he probably could have gone out there for a sixth inning, but there was just no reason to. Right. Yeah, um, that's night at all. But uh, no, I, I think if there was one thing to kind of be concerned about, like it was it was the lack of like swing and miss stuff today. Yeah. And he, he threw a lot of pitches because he couldn't put people away. He, he would he would get to two strikes, and then there would be a foul ball, foul ball, foul ball, foul ball. He needs to get to the point where. He's putting those batters away, right? Um, and, and and like I think that'll come. The stuff's too good for it to not come. Yeah, I mean, when the slider and curveball are working, and he really does need that curveball to work because he needs something secondary that mm-hmm. isn't ninety. Yeah, so when, no, I agree. When that curveball is working, he's going to get that swing and miss. And normally it is working, just not tonight. But like you said, he got through it. I guess a bad yeah. lineup, but he got through it. Right, and then same thing too with the changeup too. Like once he can kind of like figure out that changeup, and that's a and that can become a weapon against lefties. Like I mean, he only threw three today, right? So he obviously didn't have a very good feel for it. Um, but like once he he threw fifteen curveballs, uh, twenty four sliders, fifty fastballs. So he was about fifty. Yeah. He was fifty four percent fastballs. Um, so if you, if you're counting just hard stuff, if you're counting his slider as, you know, hard stuff, you know, it's uh, 80, 80% hard stuff today between yeah. fastball slider. Uh, so, so yeah, that kind of brings to your point, like better command of the curveball, better command of the changeup. I think those two pitches, if he can get those two things down, 
that's when you can be just real dangerous. At the very least, he has to have that curveball working. Yep. Because he's got to have something that's not 90. I agree. The curveball was, uh, yeah, I mean, he, looking at the stats here, no one hit it hard to, you know, actually, he was kind of hit hard on everything today. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. But, but, uh, like I said, results were there. Um, spin rate was down on every pitch to today. So, Maybe it was just, you know, something with the ball. Maybe uh, you know, who knows? But sometimes you have an off day. Sometimes you have an off day. So, and like I said, it, it was nice to see the results from an off day. Yeah, we'll take it. So, um, touching on the bullpen, um, Anthony Bonda came in two scoreless. I don't really know how much longer he's going to be here, but two scoreless. Uh, Chris Stratton a scoreless inning, and then Yeri De Los Santos with another scoreless inning. He has looked pretty good. Since being called up, I wouldn't mind seeing more than more of him. Uh, definitely. Yeah, De Los mm-hmm. Santos the only one I care about in that group. Bonda, yeah, I mean, counts so old. Stratton, I mean, he can hang around, mm-hmm. but De Los Santos is the guy's got a good sinker. He can get to the swing and miss. He's a guy you probably want on your team that I'd like to see him move use a little bit more, maybe as a fireman type of deal, but. Hopefully, yeah. Trust him. He um he has had a uh, six straight. This was six straight outing, um, scoreless outing. He hasn't given up a run since June third, uh, an earned run since June third. He's recorded a strikeout in every single appearance this year too. So he uh yeah he's looked he's looked very good, very good. Other than that, I mean, I guess that's, I mean, we're at 32 minutes. I know you said we wanted to keep this to 20 we today. Tried. It didn't happen. We did try. We, we tried. We tried. Um, we just talked about O'Neill Cruz too long. That's <laughs> Give us like two weeks to not talk about O'Neill Cruz. Like, let him cool down a hair. Yeah. Let the, <laughs> let the hype fade a little bit. Um, well, that'll be it for today. Tomorrow, again, Pirates win seven to one's third win in a row for the Pirates. That's what we call a winning streak right there. Um, they're back at it tomorrow against the Cubs. This is a four-game series, game three tomorrow. Uh, Jared Eikhoff is getting called up to make a spot start tomorrow. Oh, that'll be his first outing I as a Pirate. He has not been good throughout his entire Major League career. He hasn't Four really been league. hasn't really been all that good in AAA this year. So we'll see how Jared Eikhoff goes. He's going to be facing Keegan Thompson, um, who actually has pitched pretty well for the Cubs this year. Uh, but Eikhoff and Thompson tomorrow, seven oh five. Let's see if we can keep this uh, keep this thing rolling. Hopefully the bats roll because they're going to need them. Yep, I hit. I mean, they've uh, the first two games of the series so far. Pirates nineteen, Cubs two, so far this series. So yeah, let's keep that going. That's all I got, though. Anything you all yeah. see want to add before we before we log off? That's all. I'll see you on Thursday for sure, right? Oh, no. mm-hmm. You're taking another sabbatical. Mm-hmm. We'll see. We'll see. <laughs> but no, uh, thanks for myself. <laughs> Thanks for uh, thanks for listening in. Thanks for watching another NS9 post game show on Pittsburgh baseball. Now we'll talk to you guys tomorrow. See you guys. Peace out, Scouts. <laughs>